All right, everybody, welcome back to the Heath Barn. As promised, this is part two with former Illini guard Ahmad Starks. We left off uh, episode one with uh, finishing up there with his three years at Oregon State. So this one we pick right up with what brought him back over here to play at University of Illinois. Uh, he goes into great detail about his season at Illinois. He talks about whether he consider, considers it a disappointment uh, from an in, individual and team standpoint. But And he uh, goes into great t- detail about that. He also talks about Coach Gross quite a bit. Tells a couple of really funny stories about him. Then we get to him uh, playing overseas. That includes a lot of really great stuff. Uh, his first stop is at Sweden. So he talks about in his very first professional game, he had 36 points and almost got into a fight with uh, one of the bigs on his team. So that story is hilarious. So definitely need to listen to that one. And then he also talks about uh, getting a very serious eye injury that brought him back home and uh, kind of derailed things for an extended period of time. So a lot of great stuff there. And then we finish up with uh, what he's up to now which includes his uh, very, very successful skill camps that he has up in Chicago and also uh, some of the uh, academy and training that he's done. goes from middle school kids all the way up to WNBA and NBA players. So he's killing it up there. So he's doing a great job. And, of course, we finish up with my son Stevie asking him a question. So make sure you stick around for that part towards the end. So um, now we uh, – editing in this episode was a nightmare. That's why the days that it came out were a little off. But – um, the last seven, eight minutes of the initial conversation just would not edit and I couldn't get it uploaded. So I just got the phone with him about half an hour ago and we kind of redid that part. So he's going to be talking, he's going to be talking about his Mount Rushmore favorite players and then it's going to kind of go, Irk, and then it's just going to pick it right back up, but he's going to name them. Then he's going to name them. And then we're off and running with the last five, six minutes of the episode. So if you see him, if you hear him talking about something and then we just, then it just immediately goes to him renaming his Mount Rushmore. That's that's what happened. So, uh, but it's a great episode. Hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you very much for listening. And, uh, hurt. Let's talk here a little bit about, okay, so your time at Oregon State. Now, mm-hmm. um, you're there three years. Mm-hmm. How did the whole uh, conversation start with you uh, coming back this way? And then we'll get into how you, I, I remember this. I, I, I was looking at you, looking you up just to kind of get a little refresher. And I was like, man, I remember that whole waiver that they denied. And that was, yeah. You kind of got we. Everybody felt like you got screwed on that, but anyways, let, let's backtrack a little bit and just how did uh, uh, Illinois start to come into the picture and all that kind of stuff after your junior year at Oregon State. So during that year, there was not a ton of people don't know that. Um, like during that junior year, there's a lot of family stuff going on back here, and I'm like more you know liable to talk about it. Um, now it's been you know 10 years yeah um, but my my fam, my parents were like they were having some issues and kind of they eventually got divorced and so that was it was a, it was a heavy it was a thing on my mind yeah um, for sure along with what i applied for the waiver for with my grandmother getting sick so both of those because she lived with me she was everything to me she's now passed away but she was everything to me um so those two factors played a major role in it. Yeah. Um, and as well as you just frustrations with the team there. Like, I'll be honest, there were frustrations with the team in Oregon State, too. Right. Um, so that thing. But on top of that, there, there, were, there were family matters that were, um, you know, that I was dealing with at the time. Right. Um, but I remember how confident were you? You never know what the hell the NCAA is going to do. Let's just say it. I was well, I was pretty confident in it, but you know, just had no idea and hopeful. Right. Um, because I wanted to play, I didn't want to sit out, but I wish that. 
So it was a bummer when that happened. Um, yeah. I remember, I remember the day I found out I was at, we were at practice. I was going into practice and I was like, it took forever to come back the, the judgment. Yes. And then yeah, the ruling on it. And so going into practice, I'm like, I see coach gross and I'm like, gross, we got any news. He's like, not yet. And then afterwards, he called me in the office. They had already planned. Like, he had, he did already hear, but he wasn't going to lay it on me right before practice. Gotcha, yeah. Um, so he had told me we go in the office, and they tell me that it didn't happen. Um, and I, I was bummed. How I, I was yeah. pissed off. Like, I didn't want to sit out a year. And I, in a perfect world, it was, it was good that I had sat out that next year. For that I sat out. Like, it was... I liked our team better the next year, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and I just felt like there were complications there. I felt, you know, there were there've been apologies made. I just felt there were there were things that were done wrong in that scenario. And I I probably could have done things better myself, but I just believe that you know that that team was really good on paper. There was a lot of talent my year, right? And I thought we could have uh, thought we could have done better. Thought it could have been handled yeah. better. Um. That year, though, okay. Whenever they said you had to sit out a year, did you did it ever cross your mind uh, not play, or did or did you just you were completely committed to playing one more year of college ball? So, because you, know uh, I mean? you were probably <laughs> bummed out, you know. Yeah, not- it crossed my mind. I was like, man, I'm I'm gonna just I'm gonna just go pro, <laughs> right? Uh, or I'm gonna go, I'm gonna figure something like, yeah, I, it was it was definitely gonna still play like basketball, but I'm like, man, I'm gonna just in my head, just being a kid and just saying, I'm, I'm gonna go pro. Right. I don't want to see that. Like, so, but yeah, my parents weren't having that. We we're gonna get the education. We were, right. I was gonna get my degree. Um, yeah. From a, you know, from a great university. Right. You know, so, you know, in hindsight, yeah, me graduating from University of Illinois, like that means something coming from here, especially. Well, your senior year, uh, maybe talk a little bit about playing for Coach Gross. So, I liked the for the most part. I liked our system. Yeah. Um, playing for Coach Ghost was, was hard. <laughs> you know, I actually ran into Tracy Abrams. Well, we talk a lot still. I see him off I see him often. But yeah. we uh I ran into him in Chipotle yesterday and see, I'm trying to get him on here too. He, he he tore his ACL. Right. He tore his ACL in practice. I was guarding him when it happened. Yeah. And like it was just a non contact injury. He just landed wrong on a jump shot. Mm-hmm. Um but so at that point, it became like, you know, talks with coaches, talks with it was like I, I was I was even before Tracy got injured. But it, I, I was killing in practice. Yeah. Destroying. And to be honest, I was never a great practice player. Like I like I didn't put as much effort in as I should come practice time. <laughs> yeah. And that's oh, my uniform, I'm, I'm better with my uniform on. Yeah. Like I was I was a gamer. I was a big gamer. Right. So. That is not to say, like, yeah, like, it shouldn't be that way. For any kids who listen to this, it should not be that way. <laughs> you need to go hard <laughs> at all times, for sure. It's going to bring out the best in you. Right. I'm just, I'm just, you know, speaking on what I could have done better. Right. And, but at this point, I'm going all out. And I am killing. It is known through my through the coaches and everything like that. And people are like, man, we're going to have to start resting you in practice. This is right before the season. So we're going to have to start resting you a little bit in practice because, you know, you, you're probably not going to be coming out the game very much. Yeah. And because we lost Trey, so we had Jalen Tate, but Jalen was was a sophomore then, didn't have a great freshman year. Mm-hmm. So I remember Jalen Tate. You're, yeah. you, 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 yeah, you're, you should be and, playing, but you should be mm-hmm. playing plenty. <laughs> no, yeah. And that, and that's all. And me and Jalen, like, we go way back, you know? Right. Yeah. We way back, and we're still cool till the day. Um, right. See each other all the time. He's from here. So, see yep. each other all the time. He's like trained with me, like, the past. Before he stopped a year for an injury, he trained with me for a few years. Yeah. So, very cool. Um, he was with Nunn and uh, Jabari Parker, right? On City. Yeah, but he came later. Right, okay. So, I didn't play against him, but his, his junior and senior year, he was with them. Gotcha. At okay. And so, but yes, to be fair, at the time, I'm a better basketball player. Yep. At mm-hmm. that point in time. Like, and this is, this is not a knock on anyone, let alone Jalen. I am a better basketball, and I have, like, the credentials to show it. Mm-hmm. And um, I do think, and that doesn't mean Jalen should have been playing. Like, he was a good player. Um, right. 
But I think, boom, you let me, you, 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 I had earned them. And you kind of, you should have just given me those minutes to like, at least, at least if I'm not playing well, then that's my fault. Yeah. But you put it out there for me to, to, to like, for it's mine for the taking. So that's the talks coming into it. Yeah. And first game comes around and this is like a week or so. It's like a week or so before first game come around. I guess Coach Gross like has a change of heart and he's he thinks we have this such we and we did have a good team, but he imagined our team to be we were super deep. Yeah. Like he thought we were super, super deep. And which we did have a solid team, but we didn't have what Kentucky had at that year. Right. This is when they were doing their platoon system. So they were going five in and five out. They yeah. had the Harrison twins, Tyler Lewis, Devin Booker, Trey Lyles, Carl Anthony Towns. Right. Like I'm naming, you know, yeah. 10 NBA players almost. Yeah. So we and didn't was, look like that. He was trying that. He was trying to remember. And he told me that. I remember the first game of the season. It was like first, second, eight. Man, anybody can be our leading scorer. We've got this, this, this. So we were doing five in and five out when everybody was healthy. Yeah, yeah. And we weren't that talented. And we weren't that, I don't know how to say, like, they were, they were, they were really good, but they also have four seven footers. Even if you so, are, e- even if you are that talented, I still don't like that that strategy. I don't like it either. I don't. You don't allow players to get into a rhythm. Oh my a gosh! Lot of times. Yeah. Exactly. So when those players, you know, they didn't average great numbers. They, you know, they were averaging nine, ten, eleven points a game max. Yeah. But to ask make those, up for that, ask those had, guys in Kentucky if they liked it. They probably didn't like it either. They definitely didn't like it. I'm sure. <laughs> you know? But yeah. they had four. They had very. They had NBA players, and they had like four or seven footers to yeah. help them out on defense. Yeah. So that's the turn a lot too. They they were very elite, and we weren't that caliber. We were good, obviously. Like we yeah. we that team should have made the NCAA play turn. You got Ray, Ray Rice, Malcolm Hill, Kendrick Nunn, Nana Egu, right? Uh, myself, Aaron Cosby, um. Around black, like a bunch of people who have went on to play pro, right? Um, so man, I I I don't like. I think that whole uh, five in five out deal is insane. I I think it's nuts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and yeah. not yeah. I mean, you gotta. You, and and I also feel like uh, you can't play ball afraid to make a mistake because you're gonna get taken out. You can't play like that. You gotta like. And if somebody's exactly. rolling, and if somebody's yeah. rolling, you don't take them out of the game, man. You just let them let them keep going, you know. Yeah, so it, it just it was tough. And like I said, now it's not going to Jalen. I think you give those guys who kind of who earned it the, uh, you know, let let them play. You let them rock yeah. out, and if it's not successful, then of course coaches got to make adjustments. Yeah, bar none. But when you started that way, it was tough. So I wasn't the same player that I that I had normally been. You know, it's probably my worst year of college basketball. And I hated that to come back home. And you know how Illini fans are. I just, I hated it. So. Yeah. Um, well, I remember, we, I remember, I remember watching uh, a lot of times and wondering why, uh, you know, you're getting like 20 minutes a game instead of, or getting, yeah, instead of like 30, you know, it was yeah. just, yeah. It, 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 it was tough, man. And I, I just never could get into a rhythm. I also got, I got very strong that year. I was as strong yeah. as I could have been. So just. A lot of it probably affected my jump shot too, but just I don't, I just it didn't the year didn't go as planned, right? Um, and for the team and myself, but it's okay. Like I enjoyed coming back home. It was great to have uh, to be able to do this in front of my family. Yeah, um, who came to pretty much every home game and then a bunch of road games. So you never, you know, what I'm saying it's you know you don't really get that, especially when you go away to school. So it right. was good in hindsight. It, it was very good. So. Yeah, I can't. I can't complain too much. Um, well, okay. With with Gross, uh, like, okay, he's had good success at the at mid at the mid major level, mm-hmm. but when he came to Illinois, it didn't really work out for him. Like, why? And I'm, I don't want you. You don't have to say anything. Rip off. I'm saying anything negative about him. But like, why? Why do you think he's had success at the mid major level, but at Illinois, it did not uh, work out for him? It, it mean, you know, if if you had. To, to have I, don't, to, yeah. I don't know. Like, that's a good question. Um, It could be a number of things. Like, it may not even be a gross thing. Yeah. But, like, it may not. Like, certain things just happen because it's the wrong group together. I don't know. Um, right. I, I can't really say. And I'm not, like, I, I don't, I can't really pinpoint it to, like, man, one or two reasons. Like, man, why, 
white girls had more success there. Um, yeah. I, I can't really pinpoint it. All right. Um, Do you have any uh, stories? You got any stories about him? Any funny, kind of funny stories? Not, 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 nothing negative about him. But you got anything funny, like uh, funny stories from that year? Because I, I just had exactly uh, funny though. Like okay. he's really funny. Like so, <laughs> even my my visit, which again okay. I made this mistake. <laughs> uh, and not even, like I, I made. I, I will say the mistake because I at least wanted to come home. When I was on my visit there, like I committed the day of. Yeah. And I knew, but I said going in, I was not going to do that. <laughs> and but Gross is a is a he he's a talker. Yeah. Gross, Gross has a way of words, but he's a, his energy is unreal. Right. And I don't know if you've been around him or I don't know how well you can tell it from the sideline. Yeah. But Gr- Gross is like. He's like the Energizer Bunny 24-7. Right, yeah. And so, like, meeting him, he was, like, his energy. And I thought this was like a facade, but it wasn't. He is that way. He was that way the entire time I was with him. Yeah. And, like, his energy, six in the morning practices, he's fired up. Right. Like, that is not a fake. Yeah, that's And true. so, I can appreciate that, that that was, that was the same. Right. Um, you know, I just remember days... And, like, you know, Avante Rice was probably our best player. Um, although my favorite player on my team was Malcolm Hill. Right. Um, he was my favorite. But Ray was our best player at the time. Um, who who are you? Uh, who who are you? Like, out of, out of all, everybody on that team, like, who are you? Uh, who, was uh, pro- who, who, who are you closest with uh, on the team? Like, you know, as far as. I spent a lot of time with Aaron Cosby. Yeah. Um, because we, you know, we we red shirted together. Um, who else was pretty cool? I would say him and a little bit of Malcolm Hill. He was my roommate the second year when I played. Yeah. Um, so maybe those two. He's still grinding too, man. He's got a few. Uh... Yes, got a few NBA call ups. Yep. Got a few. Got some contracts. Like he's he's definitely doing. I've I've um I've trained him the past the maybe a year this. Last summer, and it will probably I will probably pick it back up again. He was going, he was doing, uh, he would come up with me for late night workouts um, for about a month before he yeah. got went to went to his next job, and that paid off. Got called up again this year. G mm-hmm. League stats were amazing. It was great. And then the summer before that, there was a little, just a little bit of it, but there was more last summer. So um, right. we're still in touch, and it was it was great to have him in. Yeah, and it's like. He is funny about him. I get back to gross, like Ray Ravante and like not, not really Nana because Nana was a good guy. But people, people here and there, K Nun, they would make fun of Malcolm that first summer we were there because <laughs> Malcolm was like he wouldn't come out and hang out with the guys. He would sleep in the locker room and play video games <laughs> and yeah. just wanted to sit there and get working. Like he didn't want to do nothing, right? And but, everybody was laughing at him, but Malcolm was in the gym. Yeah. It, Malcolm uh, was getting but, two a days. My assessor of the year I played, he was going back for second workouts. Yeah. Um, like he was hungry and it showed and it paid off. Right. And like Malcolm, Malcolm ain't the most like athletic player. Like he just don't, it just doesn't but when he's you not. Talk, he's not like he's he's got, he's got that old man, he's got old man game. He's got, got the old, old man game. game. Well, Dustin Ford, our assistant coach, used to call him Paul Pierce. Like, yeah, yeah. You got, you got a little like, Joe Johnson kind of deal going to. No, him. like all of that, like all yeah. of that, and so it's like it's like a little bit of that in him. So it's like, man, he was, he was. Um, I just like his work ethic. And I like his game. Like it was a smooth game. Right. So he That's, was my favorite player. But it was just funny that people laugh at him. So I tell this story to like my kids and they're well, I'm sorry, my clients. Like yeah. he. They were laughing at him for wanting to just be in the gym and not hang out. Right. And he's had a better career than almost all of them that were laughing. Yeah. Um, almost all of them. That's like a even though you're adults, it's peer pressure, and you got to be like, look, man, this is, you know, this is my deal, man. I want to go. I want to go get better. You guys yeah. do whatever you want, but I, you know, you got you can't you can't. Uh, if guys are giving you a hard time for not wanting to go out when you want to go play ball, man, that you can't listen to all that. You just got to go do your thing. Nah, you got to put the work in. There will be plenty of time for partying and girls and all of that. That's right. more message to young guys, and I, I say that a lot. Like, that isn't going anywhere. Right. 
it, it will be there. But you can very much miss your opportunity for your own your own success. Absolutely. Um, anything else you're gonna say about Gross? Uh, just I just remember like he was just the energetic part, and I remember just one practice. <laughs> he went off on like Gravante Rice, like. Did he, did, did, he swear, did, did he swear very much? Yes. yes. He did? Okay, gotcha. He was, man, like, your shit stinks too, Ray. <laughs> like, it was just like, okay. I guess Ray was acting like he could do no wrong and he was playing really well. And, like, Gross just, like, ripped him. <laughs> like, and it, it was hilarious. But Gross is, Gross is a funny guy. So I see him now. You know, I... I've he's recruited guys that I've worked with and we've had a relationship. Like actually a lot of the former coaches, they recruit all my guys. Actually. Yeah. So it's just funny how this thing comes back around full circle. Absolutely. Um, all right. So I kind of want to get into a little bit of, uh, after you get done playing ball in college, mm-hmm. uh, talk, let's talk about some overseas stuff. If you don't mind here. Um, Not at all. okay. So maybe, Talk about where you played, and then I'm gonna see if you got any. Uh, like, we got to get some overseas stories here if we if we can. So, talk about where all you played after college, and then we'll go from there if you don't mind. No problem. So, what's what what what's first? So, that summer, waiting to get that first job. Like you're so anxious. Yeah. I'm calling my agent like every week. Like, what's going on? Da, da, da. But, you know, time has to go by. Like, you're talking June or even earlier than that when, when I probably signed with my agent, like April, May. So you just wait and wait and wait. And, and then I end up signing a contract to go to Sweden. Okay. And so, okay. So this is this is very interesting to me. Okay. So you, you're done with college. You're, you got, you have hired an agent and, and he's, uh, it's it's basically like him trying to find a spot for you overseas to go play. Right. Okay, gotcha. That's how it works. So usually you're just you're just kinda working out until then. So you don't have right. to work out for that team in Sweden. There he's just your agent's getting you a job. Is yeah, it like that? Like pitching okay. you to teams. I had and I had a I had a personal connection over there as well. And um but yeah, so that's that, that's their job. Is like no, you can't. You don't need to go work out for teams. Sometimes they will have you come out and a tryout with the team type of thing. But this was, you know, they liked my film and you know they wanted to sign me. Gotcha. Okay. Which is mostly how it goes. Right. Um. So I ended up going about in September, and it was just it was a different world. <laughs> oh, I'm uh, sure. Yeah, I'm, but it was, okay. it was bigger adjustment. I know the answer to this, I'm sure, but uh, go to Sweden and playing ball or the high school to college, I'm guessing going to Sweden is a whole other deal than going from high school to college ball. Yeah, I can't say it's a bigger adjustment. It's different. Yeah, okay. Because now, by now, playing so high major basketball, the size, strength, and athleticism is, you know, same size and I won't say same. I would say same size, but now you got pros, so you have – Similar strength as that than college. Some may be stronger just because they're pros. But yeah. still, you know, high major basketball, you got grown men pretty much. Right. You know, they're, they're pros. So it's like the difference there is probably the uh, just the style of play. Yeah. Probably, and like, you know, language barriers. The Oh, my gosh. I can't even imagine. To say? Yeah. What am I trying to say? Like the just the, the culture, court, the like, culture and the everything. Culture, but... Yeah. Like the culture. That's a bigger difference than. Like the the size, strength, speed factor than than right. it was in college. It's almost like um, basketball is the easy part compared to everything else. For the most part, yeah. Just honestly, like you said, yeah. just learning your new coach again, his systems, which is normal anywhere, um, yeah. wherever you got to go, um, and different things Europeans may do versus back here in America. Right. Um. Other than that, yeah, basketball is basketball. The outside stuff is you're fending more for yourself. Yeah. Um. And Going to grocery stores and people don't speak English. You know, some places, oh some gosh, people yeah. do here and there, but you got to learn, you know, the, the currency a little bit. You got to learn the language a little bit. Yeah. So, you know, what foods you're going to feel comfortable eating. Man. So it's, it's all of that. It's all of that. So, so you just go to Sweden and then you're just kind of like, I got to figure all this out on my own. Or did you have anybody helping you along the way to figure out? Because like I was saying, 
what I meant was like basketball compared to like learning a new language and going and, and being in a different country, like basketball, when you get it on the court, that's gotta be like the easy part compared to everything going on in your life, you know, trying to, it should be, but it's not always that way. Yeah. So, you know, what I, what I, what I also, what I also like to say on like these, on like podcasts and things that I go on and talk to, or just anybody I'm educating on things, a lot of like fans and, you know, media personalities or, or anything. And it's not like to knock anyone's job or anything like, but there are things that like, they don't know because they're doing the job. Right. Like they're doing the job. They're, they're writing about what they see, which is their job. And so it's not personal, but it's all, there are other factors that play a role into what goes on into people's performances. Oh yeah. Like Def. you're, we're, we're, we're humans playing basketball. It's not the other way around. Yeah. We're not basketball players being humans. So right. you're people first. So it's bigger than just like, hey, he's going out, go play basketball. It doesn't really work that way. There can be, like you said, I know people thought I was trash my year at Illinois and I didn't play my best, but I wonder how it would be for you when you're when you coming in out of the game five minutes at a time and right, yeah. someone wants you to play maybe a different way than you wanted to. And that's just not an Illinois thing. That's just anywhere. Right. Like, how about you go somewhere and they're telling you you're going to be a three man and then you wind up playing the five. Yeah. But then you're trash. You know, it's just like oh, there's yeah. a lot of other things that go that go into these things. Those are just small examples. Um, And so my thing with that is like hey yeah basketball should be the hey you're going to people think oh you're going to play ball for a living in another country that's just great you're living the dream yes and sometimes maybe no right yeah it could be hell like that coach i've now through my years like i played for coaches who didn't like americans right so now am i really in the best situation am i really living a dream yeah if, you know what i'm saying if that's my situation and i'm being treated like such Right. So, you know, it's just like, why? It's just, so you have to have that perspective on it. But as far as Sweden, yeah, I I, pre- I really liked it for the most part. Um, Were there any other, uh, in- anybody you knew from over here, from United States over there playing? Um, so my connection over there was actually, so I played with my college teammate's older brother. He was on my team in Sweden. Gotcha. And my college teammate, he was my best friend at Oregon State. He he was on another team. So knowing them and their family were big names in Sweden. So it was like I had that connection there. I think who else did I play against? What was his name from Duke? And he was a, he was like a big guy from Duke. He's my year. I forget his name. But he played for a team out there. I think that's the only person I truly uh, recognize. Yeah. Yeah, he went to Duke. As far as your skill set, though, and just you being, just your talent level, uh, how'd you match up there, everybody out there? Oh, it was, it was great. Like, it was... Yeah, I saw, it was I saw your stats easy. and you did, you, yeah. Yeah, my stats were good, and, like, I, I'll, I'll go into that. My stats are really good. Like, I was top 10 in scoring assists and steals yeah. um, before, you know, I, I kind of I have an eye injury and I have to come back early. Um, I don't even want to, I shouldn't even call it an eye injury because I really don't know what happened to this day. Gotcha. Um, I, we can go into that too if you want, but that kind Where of. Where is it? Sweden? Yeah. So um, when I was in Sweden, there's just one day I wake up, it's like after the Christmas break, I go back, boom, boom, boom go back to Sweden. One day I wake up. And I'm like seeing double. Okay. And I just wake up. I'm seeing double. So I'm like, oh man, maybe I'm just trying to wipe the sleep out of my eyes. Like maybe I'm just, I'm, I'm not, I'm not awake yet. I go to the gym, ride my bike to the gym in the freezing cold. Um, get to the gym. The I'm seeing two rims basically. Yeah. And I am, I, I practice and I play that for like three games. While we're trying to figure this out. Yeah. Like, and that's just killing me. So it comes back after like the examinations that they didn't really know, but they didn't really know how to fix it. But they were just telling me like, basically like, 
there's really there's something going on here and that couldn't really i couldn't really translate couldn't figure it out and so i'm like i gotta go home and so i leave yep. the team come back at the same time my dad had cancer and his cancer had come back yeah um so that was also like i do have to leave right i can't try to push through this um come back when i get back here doctors of northwestern like it's a good thing you did when you when you uh anything you came back when you did because you know you you're you were pretty close to going you know completely blind in this eye huh. and i was stunned and we were like so what's the what do we do i had to get a shot in my eye once a month for the next month I mean, for the yeah. next six months yeah. to take the fluid out of my eye and they said what basically happened was the best way to describe it is I had a, a mini stroke in my eyes. The best way to describe it. Huh. Man. And so it was like, yeah. So if I didn't come back, like I, I probably would have come back months later to, after I finished the season and would have been blind all the way in this eye. Huh. Yeah. Good thing you came back. Yeah. So, so that, that, that was a setback for me for sure. So um, when you got back, um, where else did you play after that? Was it? Um, it took a second because, you know, people had questions about my eye. <laughs> right. And because right now I'm still like, I still, it's still not 100%. It's really? Better, but it's like, yeah, it's a little, still a little blotty. Certain huh. spots in my eye are blurry. If I yeah. close one eye. Um, but it, it's cool. But after Sweden, I uh, I was out like, you know, almost, almost a month, then probably, probably a year and three months. Yeah. And... I went to Australia, which was a great, great time, great decision. Um, I got back in. I got back in the game. Had yeah. a great time there. Great experience on the floor. Um, one of my favorite, one of my favorite countries. So Australia, um, you prefer uh, over Sweden? Yeah, overall, yeah. 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 Yeah, and then okay, then then uh, where else did you where else did you? So Sweden, play? Australia, then from Australia I went to China, um, Australia, China, Canada, Brazil, and North Macedonia. Nice. All right, so can you give me one like holy ca- holy crap story from overseas where? Uh, or one just, uh, yeah, you got one good story from, from played overseas that you can think of, one that stands out, or a favorite game or a favorite or anything like that. A favorite game overseas? I'd probably have to say, one of them for sure is my first one. I, I, yeah. I'll, I'll, say, I'll say a few things to you, but one of my, one of my, uh, so my first game, I actually got off the phone with someone related to this story. So my first like preseason games as a preseason pro game, first ever in Sweden, the week before the real season start. Yep. I'm like anxious, nervous. And so a friend of mine who I went to with Young with, he played soccer. Um, actually, we played soccer when we were growing up with Craig Robinson's son. Um, his family was in his, his dad and sister were in Sweden and they asked me like, Hey, are you, are you playing? Like, can we come see you? Yeah. Um, and I'm like, sure. Like this actually our first game is such and such. And they made their way there. And so I'm like, Oh, so that even, that brought nerves to me a little bit anyway. You're right. Like someone I know here, especially first game, like usually I could have done this in private. Yeah. Like. Normally, I would have done this without people I know. So, I'm right. like, oh, man, they sit in front row. And <laughs> I go out. I remember I missed my first two shots. I get into it with my big guy. That's a funny story, too. <laughs> he was my big guy. He was our second best player. And after I missed those first two, when we get into it, I don't know if I missed another shot that game. Yeah. Like, I had 36 points. Nice. And like it was just like, oh, I couldn't be stopped. So your first game and first professional game, you had thirty six. Yeah, 
that's great. Uh, nah, it was it it was an amazing feeling to be honest. And then, like you said, to have someone I know there to talk to after the game in English, right? Uh, that was that was one of those. That was one a really good moment for me. I can't. Lie. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Those big guys, you know, get into with those post players. You're probably, <clears throat> I bet, being five nine, post players probably drive you nuts whenever they're like soft down there. And you've oh, got to like, <laughs> you got to fight yeah, and scratch that, and claw. That does find me. But this guy wasn't soft. Like, yeah. I forget where he was from. Was he Serbian? <laughs> I forget what he what he was. Like, I had a Serbian. So, <laughs> so he like, some a couple of plays, he like gets the rebound and just pushes it up the floor himself and like turns the ball over. Right. And he like 6'9". Yeah. Strong. Yeah. Um, grown man. Right. And coach is like, my coach is Greek. And right. so he was like, Starks, when he when he when he when he gets the ball, tell him to give you the fucking ball. Like yell at him. <laughs> and so like let him like give him the ball. Scream at him, get the ball. And I'm like, okay. And so I do it. The very next time he does it, he gets the ball. When I tell you he got the rebound, I'm screaming at him, da da da. He dropped the ball and is charging at me. Oh my because I'm screaming like, yo, throw me the fucking ball to he like <laughs> throws it ahead to somebody like just like but not like a real pass, just like lets it go. Right. And like it's coming to me in my face and coach is like, time out, time out, time out. <laughs> and so he's yelling at coach like he did this and this. And coach is like, You can't do that. I'm like, you just told me to do that. Oh, so the coach like, sold you out? Yeah. Oh my, yeah. So after the after the after the game, like we have a meeting because the coach is like, "Man, you're my two best players. Like, I need y'all to be on the same page." And I'm like, "We're cool." Like, hey, like he wanted me to just, he did want me to like be be aggressive and go get the ball from you, just so you know what I'm saying, just to take care of the ball. Like, I'm, it was no harm meant in this situation. Right. Uh, so I had to let him know, but it was just, it was crazy. Yeah, that's funny. Coach, yeah, go get the ball from him. Then, like, I didn't tell you. So. Yeah, that's. Yeah, like, but and you were you were <laughs> adamant about like me like screaming at him to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure, man. There's, I'm sure there's all kinds of stories playing over there. But, um, I was gonna have you put your fan hat on for a second and give me like, uh, growing up or right now, whatever. You got like. Uh, who are some of your, you can do a Mount Rushmore or whatever you want, but like, your, who's your favorite like players as a fan? I'll give you some fan stuff and I'll give you uh, like my favorite players like that I played against and stuff too. Okay. Um, well, my, my favorite player, the best player I have ever played against and people will be sh- always shocked. To, it's not shocked, kind of shocked to hear this answer. Uh, the best player I ever played against was DeMarcus Cousins. Okay, gotcha. And I could say other names as well, but like the impression he left <laughs> was unreal. Yeah. yeah. And he's obviously, you know, he was in. Uh, did he make an all star team? I think he did. Oh, yeah. He made several all star teams, I think. Yeah, like he was phenomenal. <laughs> sir. In New Orleans, he was averaging yeah. like 26 and 13. And right. like he was. So <clears throat> playing against him, my. This is when I first, my very first, like, wow, I am little experience. <laughs> <laughs> When I was a freshman in high school, he was a sophomore. We're at an AAU tournament. We play against him. And I had seen him on Rivals.com. He was just newly ranked number one player in the country. Right. I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, we're playing against him. Let's yeah. do it. That didn't make me scared. Like, I was like, let's do it. Right. We, we, win, we end up winning. But the performance he had was unreal. Yeah. Like, and people don't see this part of his game, but he's getting the ball off the break. Like I said, the big guy was he's pushing it in transition as a six nine high school guy. But he's yeah. he not little. Like he's six nine and built. Yeah. And I gotta stop the ball in transition. So I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Like he's coming up and has he pulling three balls at like six nine. Never have ever I have ever seen this before. Yeah. Like he was phenomenal. And it was just like it was just crazy experience at that at that age to see that. Like now it's a little different. You got a lot more of those kids that can do right. it. This was very rare at that time. Yeah. In high school. Yeah. So he was just so dominant. But him, yeah, uh, games changed. You know now, like back then, uh, 
more uh if you're six nine get on the block you know now the game's changed yeah now it's a problem if you can't do some of that stuff at least which is crazy but yeah it is but yeah he had a hell he had a great nba career i mean he you know he he was uh he got in trouble a little bit for just you know just the way he acted a little bit on the court and everything but besides that he had a i mean he's yeah but a bunch of all-star teams and everything else so yeah, like, he was phenomenal, but there's people, I, I leave out people all the time with this, but, like, him, I gotta throw a Clay Thompson in there. Yeah. Um, I'm not the biggest How could you not love Clay Thompson? He's, like, one of my favorite, he's and my, I, one of my I, favorite I, love, I do like Clay. like, he's just not someone I jump for joy at. Right. But I have to say his name, he's a multiple-time All-Star, one of the best shooters ever. Yeah. Um, you know, champion, all that. So he's definitely has to go on that list. Yeah. Um, but yeah. played him in college. I never seen somebody get to thirty so fast. Yeah. Um. Well, he's so got the he record was, for points in a quarter NBA. He had thirty seven in a quarter. So. Yeah, like he's yeah. he was really good. It's it's just Isaiah Thomas. Obviously, yeah. before he got hurt, averaged thirty in the NBA. Uh, so guys like that, those are probably some of the best players I play. Harrison Barnes, right? It's a good group. Um, Kyrie, he's he's in there for sure. Um, as far as your as far as like your favorite player as a fan, yeah, player. those are like as, a, as he's a fan those too. Like guys. those guys, those guys I all played against. Yeah. Um, those guys, as far as favorite players like ever, let's say my favorite players ever. Uh little biases here but my probably favorite players ever Allen Iverson yeah um without a doubt he's is my that, that is, is that where that is that where that practice tattoo comes from <laughs> <laughs> I, possibly but <laughs> but so Allen Iverson for sure like he I had braids in high school yeah has been the number three the tat my first tattoo all that yeah. comes from him Right. Uh, he was everything. So him, a Kobe Bryant. Ooh, this is tough. <laughs> I mean, it's, pro it's probably. Okay. Well, Ahmad, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Just a oh, brief. Good, good, good to yeah. be back real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was telling you, um, maybe just real quick, your uh, Mount Rushmore of your favorite players, if you don't mind. Um, my favorite players. Um, we're probably going with Allen Iverson. Yep. Uh, Kobe Bryant, Derrick Rose, and I'm, I'm probably still I'm still probably still going Michael Jordan. There you go. Very good. Very good. Okay. And before it messed up last time, you explained uh, why Iverson was your favorite. So they'll, they'll get all that. So that's good. So, um, okay. so moving on to the next thing here. Um, we've talked about all your career and all that kind of stuff. So maybe tell the people what you are up to now, if you don't mind. Now I am a professional basketball player. I'm at my own training company called Starks Training. Um, working with... Working with players from the yeah, NBA players, overseas, WNBA, all the way down to the top um, college and high school players in the country and also middle school. So pretty much players of all ages, just I'm um, every day in pretty much mainly small groups. I have privates and um, small group sessions, and it's pretty much, you know, all day, every day. That's, that's kind of my day to day, as well as I've done some coaching. Um, I still coach at a uh, private school here, University of Chicago High School. So I'll coach, assistant coach for their girls' basketball team. Um, and that's kind of obviously doing, doing the regular high school season. Other than that, just doing my, my training business, my main training business. Right. And then you told me that was something that wasn't really expected, but uh, you're really happy that, of, of where it's going right now, right? Yeah, it wasn't really expected. Um, also, that is something else I'm doing, working on building an entertainment complex in my neighborhood, South Shore, in Chicago, um, along uh, with my mother. Um, it's her. She's the head honcho. I'm helping her with that. But So I was supposed to do that full-time when I retired, but 
um, you know, the game kind of caught me, you know, more yeah. or less. Yeah. Well, that's great, man. I, yeah, you've done a lot of awesome things as these people have heard on this podcast. So congrats to you, but, uh, Thank you, and also that training deal, that training deal, that's, that's awesome. Especially that wide of a range, man, you get to play, you get to like work out NBA, WBA players, and you also get to go all the way down to middle school. So you get to develop young players and you get to go all the way up to the top. So that's really awesome, man. It's, it's definitely great. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Let me get my son here. Steve is going to ask you a question. This time he's awake. Okay. <laughs> Come here, buddy. I think he's going to ask something. I think he might. Let's see. He's going to ask something. Better. He can ask. He can ask one. He can ask that same one or, or another one, whatever he wants. Okay. What do you want to ask him, buddy? What's your favorite NBA team? My favorite NBA team is and has always been the Los Angeles Lakers. Oh, really? Yeah, awesome. it has always been that way. And it's probably due to. I said just the Kobe and Shaq days. That's probably when I was locked in the most. And Michael Jordan obviously was in Chicago when I was early on, but I probably didn't. I probably couldn't watch a ton. I was still super young. But when I caught on at about you know seven, eight, it was Kobe and Shaq time. So it was, it was great to see. Yeah, that's yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All right, buddy. Uh, Tom, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. All right. Thank- Okay. Yeah, that does make sense because, you know, you think about that, like I'm older than you. I'm like another, I'm older than you. So mine was always the Bulls in the nineties. And I'm sure that if you were my age, the Bulls would have been your team, but the, your age matches up with your age matches up with when the Lakers were beating the crap out of everybody. Exactly. So the Bulls were never good when I was coming up. I was, um, I obviously watched again when, you know, Derek Rose was playing. So I was heavily right. invested in, and he, you know, he helped turn things around. Um, but that was, we're talking 08, 09. So I'm in high school then. Um, right. But when I was, when Mike won the sixth ring, the Bulls won their sixth ring, that was 98. I'm still five. Yeah, exactly. so I, didn't turn, I didn't turn six till later that year. So still super right. young for really for that to be my team, you know. Right. Yep, yep. That's how that yeah. works usually. All yeah. right, man. Well. Yeah, well, I want to thank you again for coming on, man. This was great. You gave me a lot of good stuff, and uh, yeah, best of luck to you uh, with your with your camps and everything, and coaching and your entertainment business. And if you ever want to come back on, just let me know, man. For sure. If you ever want to have me or any, uh, have any ideas on anything else, just keep me in the loop. I appreciate you having me on for sure. All right. Thanks a lot, bud. Thank you. All right. See you. All right. Thank you very much for listening, and. That's that.